Welcome to a video about Fernflower, an open source Java decompiler published by JetBrains and used in the IntelliJ IDE. This tool is not restricted to IntelliJ, however. You can operate it as a jar in the command line or presumably as a dependency in your JVM based applications. The requirements to build and run Fernflower are quite simple. You only need Git and Java and the command line. Let me just show you how large the IntelliJ community project is though. So in order to download the 3.8 gigabytes off of GitHub, you're gonna need a little bit of time and some bandwidth. Please see the description below to get the link to the GitHub project. Now we're going to go to the IntelliJ community project and build our decompiler. You'll see here that this is full of lots of other projects and things that belong to the open source code that the JetBrains people have put out for IntelliJ. We can use the Gradle command line to build the project. And because we're only interested in getting the artifact and because we're not writing the code, we can skip the tests. And I suggest this because I have actually had some problems running this build using Java 10. I think that might be the issue that I was running into. So it helps to skip the tests, which will only serve to get in your way if you're trying to get the jar. Okay, it finishes very quickly, and you'll see that there's a nice shiny new build folder. And if you go in there, and you go to the lives folder inside of that, you will see your new fernflower.jar file. So for purposes of using this jar, I suggest you move it to a convenient place. So I'm going to move this fernflower.jar to my home folder. So now you can see that it's, it's in my home folder and we can use it anytime we like from that location. Okay, so now we can go to our project files and look at the jar that I have selected for the demonstration. For demonstrations purposes, I have chosen the Commons Collections jar from Apache, the Apache Project Commons Collections. This jar does not have much in the way of external dependencies, which is important for a reason you'll see later. So the operation of our Fernflower jar is very simple. It is java-jar and where the jar is, so fernflower.jar, and then the target. Actually, I forgot one thing. <clears throat> you want to make a folder for your target because fernflower will not do this for you. Now you can operate the jar very simply by saying java-jar and then specify the jar, in this case fernflower.jar, and 
the target of, of the decompiling, which is common collections, 441 jar. And then the target folder for the output, commons collections decompiled. Hit enter. And we see that it starts to work on the files inside of that jar. Now you'll see exceptions there. This is just a sign of the level of imperfectness that is involved in decompiling code in Java. You can see in each of these exceptions things about um, classes that were not able to be processed properly. And this is pretty much inevitable. And as I've said, it's an imperfect process. But with that done, we can take a look at our results. So we'll cd into commons collections decompiled, and then we'll take a look. Now, a lot of people would look at this and go, OK, nothing's changed. I see that it moved a copy of commons collections jar into this folder. How does that help me? Uh, I wish that it were clearer from the operation of, uh, of this application what's happened here, but this jar here actually contains the decompiled code. You merely have to unzip it. So you say unzip commons, go with that, and you'll see a lot of Java files in there. As opposed to, if you go down here, and unzip the regular jar, unzip. You'll see a lot of class files in there. And there are a lot of them, so. So as you see, we have class files in the artifact we decompile, or we didn't, we started with and Java files in the folder that we ended up with. And what we can do is we can now take these files and depending on how heavy the task is that you need to do with it, you can simply view the files manually. You can go CD into, say, one of the packages, and then cat out a map iterator. Let's just say you want to look at, at this one class. You could say, OK, here's the code that Fernflower decided would represent the bytecode that was in this class file. But if you want to do something a little more complete or comprehensive, you're going to have to start up an IDE, in this case, Eclipse. So all we're going to do is take the output from that decompile and put it into a new project. So we can make a new Java project. You'll notice that I've already decompiled Fernflower itself. This time we're going to say commons collections decompiled. I like to make it very obvious that it's a decompiled project because as the Fernflower video and many resources outside have said, Fernflower does not create recompilable code. It doesn't work as it is, so you need to d differentiate between a project and the output of your reverse engineering. So we can take a look at where this is on the file system, and we can go to that place for ourselves. Create a new finder window, because we're going to have to drag all the source files over.
So now we have our source nicely loaded into the IDE. And because there are not any external dependencies for this jar, there aren't any import issues. You'll find that if you need to decompile something with external dependencies, that you will probably have to either provide those dependencies or you will have to accept the red X's that'll show up everywhere in the source. Oftentimes it's possible to get a fat jar and simply import as a um, you know as dependencies all of the actual jars that are in the jar that you've uh, taken apart but sometimes this is not possible so you might have to make the best approximation you can but in any case you can see it's very easy to browse through the source here and if you want to you can open declarations so you can say here's a multi set and I want to know what that is so I'm going to open the the declaration and see where where that is and it's it's right here it's multi set under the same packages the other class 